good evening to all today we are going to discuss about the axial thrust of rotor for expander compressor machine uh, last video i have explained the rotor thrust of first stage impeller and in second video i have also explained about the rotor thrust of two impellers for compressor machine in turbo expander compressor rotor it has also two impeller then now question comes up what is the need of or what is the difference between the axial thrust calculation of rotor for turbo expander compressor machine with respect to rotor for compression machine so this is very important uh, discussion point so let's start the discussion in expander compressor rotor it looks like same as the rotor of compressor having two impellers one side one impeller another side another impeller and it has you know in compressor expander it has one wheel which is called this wheel is called expander wheel wheel or impeller both are same and in other end it is called compressor wheel or compressor impeller both are attached on the common shaft then in case of uh, rotor for compressor we have consider only three pressure area this is one area which is called suction side then this curve area pressure which is front curve area pressure and back side since top to this portion or all together minus this it is only one pressure that is called wheel pressure or impeller back pressure similarly on other hand we have considered only this suction then curve area and the back side for case of rotor used for compressor but in case of uh, turbo machinery turbo expander compression machine we have consider four forces one is suction another is curve area pressure then it has now two portion one portion which is above the wheel seal this is called wheel seal above the wheel seal and another is below the wheel seal similarly on compressor side we have a suction this side then curve area pressure this side and it has you see this is a black color on top on top side it is a wheel seal area above the wheel seal area and the bottom there is a below wheel seal area so four pressure in case of uh, uh, turbo expander rotor we need to consider four pressure whereas in case of compressor rotor we have to consider only three pressure why it is so so this is again very interesting point that needs to needs to be understand why this is so why we need to consider four pressures in case of uh, rotor for turbo expander compressor whereas in case of compressor rotor we need to consider only three forces on each side of impeller or each side of wheel this is very interesting this is basic information you see it in expander wheel compressor when this is a shaft we have already discussed now let me explain the process path now the expander inlet or expander suction it goes to expander discharge then goes to process then comes to compressor suction and goes to compressor discharge these are the what is called pressure sensing area i said there are four sensing area expander discharge area this pressure then expander wheel front area this is the curve area then expander area above the wheel seal only this area 
and the expanded area below the wheel seal this area same way other side on compressor side we have suction area then curve area then wheel seal area above sorry area above the wheel seal and area below the wheel seal there are each side there are four area we need to consider for turbo expander compressor rotor now let's understand this this is very interesting as i said in case of turb in case of uh, compressor there is no breathing or there is no sensing point or through which gas is relieved from the wheel pressure in case of compressor rotor whereas in case of uh, turbo expander you can see this is one expander this is compressor wheel and you can see this is one pipe which is called automatic thrust equalizer uh, valve which is connected from the wheel sensing area to compressor suction when it is installed on compressor side and in this case you can see closely uh, holes are provided on expander wheel so that seal gas can pass from wheel pressure to compressor di expander discharge and that is why you can see there are two different pressure on back side of uh, expander because one pressure below the wheel seal which is called expander wheel pressure and one area on pressure above the wheel seal which is called wheel seal pressure okay but in compressor side you can see but there is a variation in case of uh, when it is installed on this side there is a variation of uh, pressure of uh, compressor wheel pressure when the this wall is open the wheel pressure becomes the compressor suction pressure when wall is closed the wheel pressure become equal to wheel pressure above the wheel seal i mean in when wall is closed the both pressure above the wheel seal and below the wheel seal are same is called wheel seal pressure whereas when wall is open this this pressure become the suction pressure so there is a variation of wheel pressure of compressor when at is installed on compressor why uh, compressor side and that is why we need to consider a variation of uh, you know pressure of the wheel of course the pressure above the wheel seal remain constant doesn't change but the pressure below the wheel seal that is called wheel pressure is changing it lowest becomes suction pressure of compressor and maximum becomes equal to wheel pressure above the wheel seal so there is a variation and that is why we need to consider both and in that case holes are provided so again we have to consider two pressure one above the wheel seal and another is below the wheel seal when at install on expander side in that case the holes are not provided in that case there is a variation of pressure of wheel pressure it when wall this at wall is fully open it goes becomes expander discharge pressure because there is no all pressure becomes this when at is closed this pressure becomes the above the wheel seal pressure so there is again variation of pressure of expander side when at is installed then what happens to this side as you can see there is no at and that is why the wheel pressure which is below the wheel seal is equal to pressure above the wheel seal so entire pressure you can consider similar like what we have discussed for rotor having a rotor of compressor that means all pressure you can consider in this case only three pressure because back side both pressures have become same when there is no breathing or no it is installed whereas if it is installed there is a variation of wheel pressure similarly when it, and in that case also there is a holes are provided that is why there is a different pressure but in this case when it is installed here there is a variation of expander wheel pressure from expanded discharge which is minimum to maximum expander wheel pressure above the wheel seal so same thing it is written what is uh, you know pressure variation when it is installed in compressor side 
and what is position expander wheel pressure is certainly less than expander C level of the pressure in this case. But in case of X80 install this side, this pressure wheel pressure is equal to pressure above the wheel seal and expander wheel pressure is equal to expander discharge pressure when it is open and when it is closed of course expander wheel pressure is equal to above the wheel seal pressure and in that case of course expander wheel pressure is equal to expander pressure above the wheel seal so both pressure are same so this is the design when it is a fully closed rotor will be moved like this that is compressor side when it is fully open this rotor will be moved like this this is how it is designed similarly in this case when it is fully closed rotor will move like this when it is fully open rotor will move like this so in both the cases if it is partially open then rotor should be in the center depending upon how much it uh, needs to be open similarly in this case it is true so in any only one configuration is allowed either you install at at uh, expanders expander side or compressor side and that is why now you understood why we need to consider four pressures in case of expander compressor rotor now the forces you know the pressure into area area is fixed so pressure is varying since so when pressure is varying the forces will also varying so suction pressure this is expander discharge pressure curve area pressure wheel seal above the pressure forces and this is the wheel pressure which is below the wheel seal area similarly on the expander side suction pressure curve area pressure front area pressure wheel seal area pressure above the wheel seal and compressor expander wheel uh, sorry compressor wheel pressure so these forces and as you know there there is, if it is installed is the f the expander wheel force will changing based since pressure is changing when it is installed this side then expander wheel pressure is changing because of opening of et valve and this is how it is designed to take care of uh, axial thrust by ate so now let's uh, calculate the you know the forces towards expander in also what are the forces acting on expander in this side so you have to add these two forces so this is added f4 f3 which is this forces minus f2 f1 on this side so total net force on this side is this side is this similarly for the compressor and if calculate force on compressor side you have to add these two forces which is f6 f5 and minus these two forces f6 f8 f7 so these are the total forces acting on this wheel on that side so now we need to calculate the net force on the rotor so net force of this minus net force of this is called total net force acting on rotor so when this f note f net when expander side total force is greater than compressor force the rotor will move like this if expander force total force is less than compressor force then rotor is moved like this same thing it is written this is a case when expander force is more than compressor side force and so rotor is moved like this similarly when compressor expander force is lesser than compressor force rotor is moved like this so i hope you have understood the axial thrust force calculation and uh, what are the sensing pressure sensing area for expander compressor rotor particularly we need to consider the four forces four sensing area for each side or each impeller expanders impeller and compressor impeller and there is a variation of uh, wheel pressure based on uh, the variation of uh, you know the based on the operation opening of the at wall and that is why the wheel pressure is changing when wheel uh, at is installed in, on compressor side there is a variation of compressor wheel pressure and it lowest pressure is equal to compressor suction pressure and maximum pressure is equal to uh, pressure above the wheel seal pressure so because of this variation the rotor is controlled so when, when it is fully closed 
rotor will move towards the comp expand compressor side when it is fully open rotor will move towards expander side when it is installed on uh, expander side in that case when it is fully closed rotor will move towards the expander side when it is fully open rotor is moved towards the compressor side and that is how when so rotor will remain at center based on required opening of uh, wall position of uh, 80 so i hope you have enjoyed this thank you thank you for watching